25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Robin, you're pretty good with numbers. I can't get my head around big numbers. I just can't. Oh. I, I don't grasp it. I, I just can't imagine what a billion really is. I don't even know what a billion is. I mean, yeah, I know kind of technically. I mean, I know it's, what is it, nine zeros? Something like mm-hmm. that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, once upon a time, 13.81 billion years ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Think about what that was like. Uh, J.C. Ferris is the author of that book. Uh, J.C. is on the phone. He's a former United States Army officer. He's a guest instructor at Ball State University in Indiana, right? That's in Indiana? Yes. Uh, he hosted a weekly radio show, and he's uh, got this book called Once Upon a Time, 13.81 Billion Years Ago, An Examination of the Universe, Its Creation, and How It All Works from the Perspectives of Both Religion and and science. J.C. Ferris. Good morning, J.C. How are you? Well, good morning, Larry and Robin. How are you guys today? I'm 13.81 billion years late. I have no... <laughs> I, can't yeah. even, I, I, I can't even imagine. I don't even know. I mean, I have a hard time remembering 20 years ago, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's, that's the uh, approximate time that uh, uh, science determined the... Uh, uh, Big Bang occurred, uh, uh, which then created the ensuing uh, creation. And what was you know, there? I mean, what what was there to bang? Well, <laughs> our book. That's a funny question. I know. Fact, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, the drums. Yeah. <laughs> bang the drums. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what was there? I mean, there was a Big Bang. What, what, he- what the heck blew up? Right. Well, it wasn't an, a, a, uh, an explosion as we think of one. Uh, it was an ex- it was an occurrence that created an expansion. Now, science tells us that actually uh, the Big Bang occurred uh, thirteen point eight oh nine six two billion years ago. Oh my gosh. Uh, they're so, so they the, have to be so dis- precise, don't they? Oh, I know, I know. So, <laughs> so the book purposefully says thirteen point eight one billion years ago, because the first question somebody's going to ask is, okay, so what was there before the Big Bang? Right, that is my question. <laughs> so, yeah, and so the book starts before the Big Bang, oh, and it okay. addresses okay. that. Okay. All right. <laughs> right. So, anyway, uh, so this. The the Big Bang, I called it, uh, call it was uh, established a new relationship, uh, which that new relationship was the uh, ensuing creation that that resulted from the Big Bang. So the creation of of what we know, okay, you know, what what we see, uh, and but we don't see everything because. Uh, we only see 4.9% of the universe, according to science, and 95.1% is, uh, consists of dark matter and dark energy, of which we cannot see. So, okay. but, uh, go ahead. I, I was just curious about the, the connection between what religion teaches, and, and I guess that would be Judeo-Christian religion. I mean, unless you want to consider all the religions. Well, I mean, what do they? I mean, does it? Is it just? Po- is it saying the same thing but in a poetic way? Well, my my favorite quote <laughs> was by Robert Jastro, who was a theoretical physicist and director of uh, NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, as well as the uh, NASA Lunar Space. Uh, missions and uh, this quote pretty well sums it up to a degree Uh, the quote says for the scientist who has lived by his faith in the power of reason the story ends like a bad dream he has scaled the mountains of ignorance he is about to conquer the highest peak as he pulls himself over the final rock he is greeted by a fan a band of theologians who have been sitting there for centuries. <laughs> so <laughs> that's funny. And now, uh, but I mean, if you, there but, is, but if you, if you, okay, if you, the, the little tiny description you gave us of the Big Bang theory, 
Uh, and the very beginning, and I can't quote the Bible unless I look it up, so I looked it up. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. So I'm wondering if let there be light and there was light was a big explosion. Maybe maybe it's just a poetic way of saying what scientists are saying. Well, you know, uh, the Big Bang did create a, a, a lot of uh, energy from it and violence. Now, what the Big Bang scientifically uh, uh, happened is that there was a, a uh, minute particle of what is referred to as super force that encapsulated a speck of space. Okay, so like, wow, you know, this is from from uh, uh, a normal view. That's like, wow, that is so little you can't even think about okay, it. Can I ask a question uh, about that? I have a question about that. Einstein's uh -huh. theory of relativity, does it apply to matter or does it only apply to energy? Does the the theory of relativity apply to matter? Oh, both. You oh, know, okay. E equals MC. Yeah. All right. So, so if, if everything is relative and there is nothing, then a tiny molecule is the biggest thing in the universe. Well, it was the beginning of it as, as from our standpoint. Now, uh, you know, without giving too much away about the book, but we, you know, the book starts out initially referring to both Einstein's theory of general relativity as well as uh, quantum mechanics. And uh, both of those are the only two fields by which science has bases everything on. Now, with this Big Bang, what uh, uh, terminology? What uh, was apparent to have occurred is that this unified superforce was separated uh, into the four known physics of science. So the separated, the unified superforce to begin with became the separated superforce, and those four uh, known science. Uh, physics of science are electromagnetism, gravity, what's called the strong nuclear uh, interaction, and the weak nuclear interaction. So everything is based on that known science, and known it, physics. And in your mind, in your mind, at least in your opinion, does that explain life? Well, it does. It explains the building block opportunity for life because uh, as we... What we know from this science is that all of these factors, these four known forces, have worked together to, in building block uh, manner, to create what we see. Not what we don't see, but the 4.9% that we do see. Okay, okay. So, so, uh, so, you know, science has three huge questions that remained unanswered uh, for scientists. Uh, one is, you know, what is dark matter and dark energy? Uh, the only way it's presently detectable is in what's called large-scale structures, which would be like galaxies and, and what are called super clusters of galaxies, which is multiple galaxies uh, clustered together. And by the gravitational effect of that that uh, dark matter has on visible matter. So if it and has gravitational effect, then dark matter is just, something. it's just named dark matter. It doesn't mean it's not real. It's a real thing then, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. That, that the lack of a, uh, of a different term, well, all... Although science classifies dark matter as non-baryonic matter and visible matter as baryonic matter or made from atoms and molecules, etc. So that's what we see. Now, so that's a big question, of course, for science. What is dark matter? The other two big mysteries are why is there something 
versus nothing. Uh, that's that's a, a baryogenesis, scientifically, the term. Now, science had thought that uh, when when the creation occurred, there was an equal amount of antimatter and matter uh, created, and that one actually cancels out the other. So, how come there was uh, a certain amount of matter left over? Uh, that wasn't canceled out, or why is there something versus nothing? Well, are you are, <laughs> in the book? Do you explore your own theories uh, to explain some of the things that are left un, unanswered? Well, it uh, what I do in the book is is uh, I take the cosmological model for the for the Big Bang and the ensuing creation, and. Uh, address what science has told us and tells us, continues to tell us. And then I dissect that into postulates, not theories. Now, postulates are a little more solid than a theory. Okay. okay. So, so from these, from, but from these scientific theories, which are, have become well accepted, uh, uh, universally, uh, I create uh, postulates from, you know, or con conclusions throughout the book for what has this told us. Okay. And, and, and so, uh, so, you know, not necessarily do I create my own theories, I'm creating postulates from the theories right. that science has right. provided us. Gotcha, okay. So... But but then when you right. when when you put intelligent design into the mix it makes people wonder if some planets house life and they're not anymore or are there planets out there that could house life that we just haven't discovered yet well, Yeah well intelligent design I, I that's that I I consider that a poor term but uh but regardless of that Okay, so when the when the, the Earth was created four point five four billion years ago, uh, now science has somewhat recently determined that uh, the probability of much earlier uh, potential of, of of a planet like Earth occurred maybe as early as. Uh, you know, 12 to 13 billion years ago. And so, or a planet like Earth, that's, you know, Earth is referred to as a rocky planet, you know, third rock from the moon hmm. movie or Sun. TV Sun. show, et cetera. Yeah. 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 And, uh, <laughs> but, and, and, and a rocky, we a rocky TV planet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, a rocky planet is, is, uh, well, considered, one of the necessities for for having life like uh, can like I, Earth. Can I ask you a Go question? Ahead. I have a question. Why did you tell Robin that intelligent design is a poor ter term? Why is that a well, poor term? Well, because well, because there are those who say, well, intelligent design. This uh, this this is inferring some something uh, that that uh, oh equates to fake news <laughs> or something so do you, you know so do you think there i mean do you think there is some design going on like are we are we witnessing design is are we designed is our world designed in some way well by again design it was okay how do you want to say this best uh The uh, the Big Bang and the creation had a purpose uh, to them. Now, this purpose was from was uh, occurred from within eternity. Now, what was going that? back to <laughs> going back to the first statement I said about uh, earlier about general relativity and, and quantum mechanics, both of them 
both of those fields when trying to determine the location, so to speak, of where the Big Bang occurred, both which would be a singularity occurrence, both came up to the same conclusion. So the only two ways of making the determination both concluded the same thing, and that was that that conclusion was scientifically referred to as math from a mathematical standpoint as infinity, which of course is a synonym for eternity. Okay, and and would so, in, would infinity go both directions, forward and backward? Oh, it, infinity is forever and never ending. You know, I mean. Okay, it, but I mean, so, would it go back? Like, if we went back to the beginning, the the four, uh, thir- what is it, thirteen point eighty one billion years ago? Mm-hmm. It could, was there another thirteen point eighty one billion years before that? For example, is it just go on and on and on? In eternity or infinity, whichever you want to refer to it as, is timeless. Now, what we show in the book is that this unified super force from which the I'm, was the beginning ingredient along with a speck of space for the Big Bang. Right, right. I, I, that I, I, it's a different it's a different physics than the physics that was created. JC? So w- yeah. We, you said that the universe was the Big Bang happened for a purpose. Right. What was the purpose? It was for God's beatitude. Uh, okay, so God ironically So God created I, God created the everything. Yes. Okay. It, it, essentially, yes. But now, now. So wouldn't that be it intelligent? It depends design? on what you want to call God. Now, super force is the physics of God. If that makes in, any but, sense. But but if there so, but if there's a God, I, I don't mean to be what what is this? No, I don't mean to be debating you. I'm just I'm just curious. No, what no, that's all right. You know, and, and I'm not really trying to debate you in any way. I'm just curious what your conclusions are, and 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 does God, as we normally refer to we refer to god uh, as an intelligent creator okay he created us with mm-hmm. intelligence and with purpose and there's in, right. and it looks like there's intelligent design in every living thing uh, the leaf that i'm looking at on the tree across the the, the courtyard here there's intelligent design mm-hmm. in that and it, does it all stem back to some kind of intelligent design that's why i was curious why you thought it was a bad right. term well well, because for some people it has a it has a bad connotation is, is the only reason I say that. But, you know, but there are cynics everywhere, and uh, but yeah, but that's okay. I mean, if you've scientifically looked at this and you have some conclusions right. of your own, I mean, who's to say that your conclusions aren't correct? I'm just trying to to learn from you what your conclusions right. are. What are your What are your conclusions? You know, and so far well, you you've let us know that you believe that there was a purpose for the Big Bang and therefore a purpose for everything else that followed. Right. Right. Now, when God created the universe or the creation or, you know, with the Big Bang, he wanted to create something for, like I say, his own beatitude because of the manner in which the physics of the unified superforce works versus the the, uh, separated superforce, which is the building blocks for creation. Now, the unified superforce is a holistic type of of uh, physics, meaning it encompasses the whole factor. But it it is not, uh, ironically, able to create per se. Meaning, could another? It takes it takes the building blocks of the separated superforce to create okay. something. It, let me ask you something. Is it possible for another mm-hmm. Big Bang uh, event to happen now? Is that possible? 
Well, it would it would be potential, although very very unlikely. Now, I refer to the uh, the creation as the womb uh, of the of the greater realm. The greater realm is in eternity, <clears throat> and the uh, the creation is the is a womb within the greater realm where the where the creation takes place and is continuing to take place so, uh, and, it, and will continue uh, this, to take place. This is so deep. It's, it's very hard to get to all this. In. And it's a very fascinating <laughs> conversation. I can't wait to read the book. The, the, <laughs> the book is huge, by the way. It's more than 600 pages uh, in size. Um, and for those just tuning in, it is written by our guest, J.C. Ferris. And the book is called Once Upon a Time, 13.81 Billion Years Ago, An Examination of the Universe, Its Creation, and How It All Works from the Perspectives of Both Religion and Science. Very fascinating. I did find it on Amazon. J.C., do you have a website dedicated to the book or to yourself? Yes. Yeah, it's... Uh Website is www.onceuponatime1381.com. Now, the book weighs six pounds. But it, physically, it, it, I think you've got a co- some copies of it. It's, it's a stunning book physically uh, it you looks, know, I, no, uh, we don't have we don't have a copy but I've, I've been looking at it on amazon it it's looks, on route it, it looks wonderful uh i i love the thinking i love the it's a very very hard thing to explain and, and forgive me for not grasping all of it but i oh I, no no well because the book does it that's why it took it's actually about 670 eight and a half by 11 inch size pages wow and but the book goes through all of this in Step by step, a you know, in baby steps, so that uh-huh. you that an average reader can follow what's being explained. Now, at the end of each chapter is also an opportunity uh, with a lined page for uh, the reader to to respond to what they just read. Meaning, because I, I, right at the end of each chapter, I ask them. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What is your take on what you just read yeah, yeah. in this chapter? My, because it it requires you know that that I want the reader to participate in what they are reading. One quick question. And one quick question before yeah. we run out of time. Theoretically, if mankind mm-hmm. if mankind could replicate the Big Bang event. Would it all end up the same way it ended up? I mean, would we have another Earth? Would we have another, you know, J.C. J. Ferris on the well, phone with us? I mean, would everything happen again? Well, mankind cannot re- will not be able to replicate it because every everything made is consists of what I refer to as a unified self. Okay, so what is that unified self? Yeah, we, it is. We, gonna, it is. A unified self consists of what the terminology that right. Stephen Hawking used, right. uh, but that didn't apply JC, what it was for. We're out of time. I, that, we, we, oh, okay. we, we went into the future a half hour, and now we have to we have to bail out. <laughs> JC, yeah, Fer- yeah. well, thank you so much for being on. I just want to say one last one last thing. This is this reference is what. The unified self consists of right. super symmetric partners. So nice. that'll leave you a big question mark. What are those? So. Fox News Radio. I'm Chris Foster. It's a long weekend that could get longer for federal employees affected by the government shutdown that kicked in Saturday. Most staff at the EPA and the Departments of Housing, Education and Commerce will be staying home today. And about half of the workers in the Treasury, Health, Defense and Transportation Departments will also not be going to work. Visa and passport processing could be delayed. Fox's John Decker, a vote in the Senate scheduled at noon to try and move a short-term spending bill forward. Award season rolls on. A big night for three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri.